Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio and welcome to another Let's Make a Tower Defense in Unity game dev tutorial. In our last video, we got our arrows up to level 2.0. They are definitely improved, they have range now, they destroy themselves over time, and they can inflict damage to our enemies. Now, I don't want this series to get lost in making things look really pretty. I want to just kind of communicate the most important elements of tower defense, but I've got to be honest, I just can't handle how brutal that looks. I feel like we really need some visual feedback to show when we've hit the enemy. And so in this video, we're going to add a knockback effect. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is head on over to our scripts folder and open up our arrow script. So right off the bat, let's just come up to the top here where we can make a public float and let's just call this one knockback force. We can initialize this say at five and we'll play around with values later on. Next up, we can come down to our on collision method. At the moment, whenever it hits anything, it checks to see if it's hit an enemy and then deals damage to that enemy. We're just gonna go to that line right above the damage dealing. And what we're gonna do is do a quick check on the collision game object. And this time we wanna get its rigid body component because we wanna deal with its physics. At this time, we're gonna use an add force method and add force takes in two parameters. The first is it wants to know what direction the force is. In this case, we can do vector to right since our arrows are always moving to the right. Now, if you wanted, you could do a custom vector here. You could do a new vector and for example, do zero comma one, which would be a zero on the X and a one on the Y, which would send it upwards. Or if you wanted to go diagonal, you could do one comma one, which would go up and to the right. However, for our purposes, we're just gonna stick with a vector two dot right. At this point, you can multiply that by your knockback force, which will just deal with the intensity of the push. And then it's just going to want to know what force mode we're using. We're going to use force mode 2d.impulse, which just applies the force really suddenly and then allows it to slowly dissipate over time. Now, whenever we hit an enemy, we will first of all apply a rightward force to that enemy and then apply the damage. So we notice by that little stuttery effect that we are in fact achieving some knockback. However, it doesn't matter if we put 500 force on the arrow, it's still going to look like that. And the reason for this is because of our robot movement script, which is always applying a leftward velocity. And so for just a brief second, we start to knock him back. And then this fixed update script hits the next frame and tells it, no, our velocity is equal to left. And so it immediately gets him moving again. So what we're going to need to do is actually suspend this movement. There's one other problem. If we go into our enemy health, We'll notice that here we're always checking so that as soon as our health gets to zero, the enemy gets destroyed. And so if an arrow shot has enough to kill our enemy, he won't get knocked back, but will be destroyed before he can be knocked back. Now we can actually fix both of these problems with a little bit of a delay written in. So what we're gonna actually do is spend a little time in our enemy health script. At this point, we're actually gonna come down below our update method. So we'll get after that curly bracket and we're gonna use a coroutine. Now a coroutine works very much like a method, except that it allows us to pause executions. We can actually have delays where it won't move to the next line until a certain amount of time has passed. So let's do this. We're gonna make a IE numerator, which is how we declare a coroutine. And we're just gonna call this one knockback delay. Now, anytime you are creating a coroutine, it's going to need a yield statement, which just pauses the code. And so we're gonna go yield return new, and we're gonna use a wait for seconds delay here. We'll put brackets, and in there we could say, for example, a one second delay and semicolon that up. But this is called a magic number. We don't like to use those in code. We want numbers that we can control through variables. So let's go up to the top here, where we'll make a public float, and let's just call this delay time. And for now, let's make it equal to a very small amount, like say 0.15 seconds, which will be just enough time to register the knockback. We can now come down to our coroutine here and our wait for seconds can just have delay time in the brackets. So now when knockback delay is called, it will wait 0.15 seconds before moving on to the next line. So at this point, we're gonna have it wait before checking whether to destroy the object. So let's grab our if health is less than or equal to zero. I'm just gonna cut that out and put it underneath here. So now when this enemy gets hit, his health will go down, but it won't actually immediately destroy him. It's going to wait 0.15 seconds. We also want it to delay his ability to move forward. And to do that, we're gonna need to have this script talk to the movement script. So let's come up top here. We'll make a public 
and we'll put robot movement in here. Let's just call this robot movement with a lowercase. And so what we want to do is as soon as the knockback delay starts before the actual delay, we want to go robot movement and we just want to turn the script off. So to do that, we'll go enabled equals false. This will disable his movement script, wait 0.15 seconds. And then let's grab this line here. And at this point, we can actually make it so that if his health is at zero, he gets destroyed. And we'll put an else statement. So if his health is not at zero, we can then have his robot movement enabled, turn back to true. Now we are almost all done here. We've got a nice setup here where we will disable his movement, wait a brief amount of time, then check whether to destroy him or to give him movement back. So now that we've created this great knockback delay, we're going to need to actually initiate it and make it happen. Now to do this, we're actually going to declare a new method. And actually what we're going to be doing here is not just making the delay work, but also making our code a little more sophisticated. Previously, this script was checking all of the time in update for whether or not to destroy the enemy, which is not very efficient when you have a lot of enemies always checking. Instead, we're going to make it so that he only checks when he actually gets hit. So let's get rid of our update method altogether. And now we're going to make a new method. This one will be public as we're going to need to talk to it from a different script. So we'll make a public void. Let's call this one take damage. And then we'll put brackets and curly brackets. And so this is our first time declaring a custom method and we're making it public so that our other scripts can call take damage and then whatever's in here will happen. So as soon as take damage is called, we're going to want to call our knockback delay. So we're going to start the coroutine. Then in brackets, we say which one. So we're going to start knockback delay and then we just need to give it its brackets. So at this point, whenever take damage is called, we'll start the coroutine knockback delay. I'm also going to do one other thing here. This is getting a little more advanced, but it's really going to future proof our code. We're going to actually do the subtraction of health right in here. So before we call the knockback delay, let's take away some health from this robot. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say that health is going to minus equals damage. So we'll subtract, oops, we'll subtract our damage. Now you'll notice it's not going to like that at first because it doesn't know what damage is. And we're actually going to get that information passed in from our arrow. So when our arrow tells us to take damage, it's also going to give us an integer called damage, which will tell us how much. All right, this might feel like a lot right now. We're almost done, and then we'll just walk through how it all works together. Let's quickly head over to our arrow script now. So at the moment, in our on collision function, our arrow is talking to our enemy health script and directly modifying its health. We're just going to take that last part off. Instead of doing that, Whenever it hits the enemy, we're going to add our knockback force like we do on this first line, but we're also going to go take damage and then in brackets tell it how much damage. That's all we have to do here. So now whenever we hit the enemy, we will apply the knockback force and we'll call the take damage method. The take damage method in our enemy script will first of all change his health and then call the knockback delay, causing our robot script to be disabled briefly so it can't move. It will wait 0.15 seconds, see whether or not to destroy the robot, and then give him his movement back. All right, that was a lot going on. It's time to test. Let's go up to the top here. We can go File and Save All since we were working in multiple scripts. All right, and just one last little problem. You need to make sure that all of your robots are able to talk to their own movement script. So you'll just need to individually grab their movement script and make sure that they're talking to their own movement. All right, now just as we're about to test, I did just speed up my arrow a little bit so that it moves at a speed of five and also made it so my bow fires every second so that we can test this a little more effectively. Now we're getting a nice snappy effect when we hit the enemies that's working quite effectively and also buys you a little bit of time as they advance. Though, as you can see, they still inevitably get closer and closer. All right, this is actually working pretty nicely overall. I hope you found this one helpful <laughs> and nice to see him spin a little bit. If you have, please be sure to like or subscribe to the channel. Till next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers. <laughs>